Hey guys, Youngblood back with you for our fourth episode of Captain's Log. Appreciate you coming back. Uh, this episode is going to be specifically about air-to-ground combat, uh, but before we get into that, I want to talk about the most recent patch that came out on Tuesday and how that's really going to impact you while you're flying. Uh, the first one is really that the flak damage uh, was increased by 5%. Uh, so what is that going to mean to you? Uh, you know, Phalanx turrets, Burster Maxes, Sky Guards, uh, they're all going to do more damage against you. Uh, the, probably the biggest one was the rocket pods took a pretty big nerf. Uh, you know, a lot of people felt they were overpowered. I personally thought they were fine. Uh, you know, that being said, that's coming from a pilot, so take it with a grain of salt. Uh, what happened was the blast radius isn't actually changing. The, what's happening is the damage that's done towards the outside of that radius has been significantly reduced. Uh, biggest impact there is going to mean that uh, infantry is a lot harder to kill. Uh, vehicles, it still does a lot of damage, and against infantry, really, if you're getting direct hits, but that splash damage isn't nearly as much. The biggest one that is frustrating to me is the damage against Sunderers was reduced. Now, air was reduced too, and I couldn't care less about that, because in most situations I'm going to use uh, the rotary anyways. But the Sunderers now take several passes to get a kill, uh, and if somebody's repairing that, you may never get that thing destroyed. So, uh, that's something that happened, and then the damage against turrets was significantly reduced as well. Uh, you used to be able to kill a turret in one pass if every rocket hit, now it's going to take uh, about two, so it was a really big change. The last change that's really going to impact you while you're flying is with the uh, air shotgun, the uh, other Mustang. Uh, basically, it got a buff. I haven't used it yet. I still think it's ridiculous. I think my next video is actually just going to be a short one using it, but um, the, the spread is better, the damage uh, is was increased, and there's less uh, drop-off on the projectile. All right, let's go ahead and move on. All right, so I want to talk first about my preferred setup for the air-to-ground roll. You know, one thing that you can look at up here is that you can actually preset several different ones to use. I've got a tank buster, which is my air to ground uh, reaver, and my fly swatter, which is air to air. Uh, so let's focus in on the tank buster. And uh, this is just really what I've found works best for me. And there's a lot of different things that you can do. Uh, but ultimately, I chose the no-brainer rocket pods over here for when you're attacking ground targets. Uh, and as a primary, I actually kept the uh, air-to-air -air, uh, Vortec rotary there. Now, sure, when we're talking about primary weapons, you can see that the Mustang is technically listed as effective against all targets. But neither one of these guns is going to be particularly awesome against ground targets. So with that in mind, I chose to go with the rotary because that's going to give you uh, a better all-around vehicle. Yes, you've got a Reaver or an ESF that's set up to do damage against the ground, but there's a lot of air vehicles out there that are going to want to do damage to you. This is going to give you that flexibility that you need to stay alive a little bit longer. Uh, now, when we look at the attachments that I've got on here, I've got the 1.5 zoom, uh, which is actually useful for picking off uh, you know, infantry that are on the ground. Uh, and then these other ones we'll talk a little bit more about in an uh, air-to-air video. The real meat and potatoes of this one's going to be with the breaker pods, and I don't think that's any surprise at all. You know, people, and I don't want to get into it, but people always gripe that things are overpowered. Well, when you're attacking ground targets, this is your only option. You shouldn't have anything else on here. With the breaker pods, um, I've got several different things. I've got uh, several different optics unlocked, and I'll kind of talk about the differences between these in just a sec. Uh, but the big ones that you want to have are the upgraded reload speed, and the upgraded ammo. Uh, I've got the ammo upgraded pretty high to about 54 rockets, and I'm going to keep putting more and more into it because these fire really fast and you run out of ammo really quickly. So those are some things that you may want to throw on there. The last things that I wanted to talk about here would be uh, with your defense. The composite armor is really, really helpful. Uh, in the most recent patch, they actually increased the flak damage by 5%. Uh, and you can see here that this actually is reducing the effect damage by 20. So even with the patch, you're coming out ahead. It gives you that extra armor and the time to stay alive longer. Uh, it's going to do. It's going to help you with burster maxes. It's going to help you with the uh, phalanx turrets, uh, and it's going to help you even with uh, you know some heavy shooting as uh, LMG at you. 
And then the other one would be when you're talking about your airframes, the hover stability is the one that's really going to suit you well uh, in all situations, but specifically when you're actually working on air to ground targets. Uh, it's going to give you the ability to slow down faster. You're going to be able to hover a little bit better. It's going to give you the maneuverability that you want. This is really the way that you should go. So with those in mind, that's the general setup. Obviously, the apparent stuff is all just for uh, show. Put whatever you want into it, but that's my recommendations. One of the main drawbacks that you're going to find when you're using the thermal or the infrared on your pods uh, is that it's got a render distance. You can only see so far. Now, what I'm doing here in this test is that I just dropped a waypoint right on top of a tower, and I did it once using the thermal, and I did it again using the infrared. And what I'm doing is I'm slowly moving up towards it to see how far out I can see it. Well, using the thermal, it ends up being about 300 meters out. Now, when we're talking about uh, 300 meters, think about how far you can see without this optic on there. That means uh, anti-air, um, you know, other aircraft tanks are going to be able to see you from significantly further out than you can see them. That means you're going to get shot first. Uh, when we're using the therm or I'm sorry, the infrared, it ends up being about 500 meters out where you can actually see the uh, tower. So the infrared's a little bit better as far as the distance goes. It's significantly cheaper, uh, so it may be the better way to go. It's typically the one that I use the most. Uh, it's, you know, it just seems like I get a little bit better uh, situational awareness. Uh, but either way, it's not something that you want to keep on at all times. If you know there's targets in the area, use it. You can kind of keep an eye on what's going on. You may be able to spot infantry in the snow a little bit better. Um, and just know that it's definitely more effective at night. Either way, uh, it's, it's a tool to supplement what you're working on and what you're trying to accomplish. It shouldn't be your main go-to. So keep that in mind when you're using this. Now, if you remember in the last couple of videos, I talked a little bit about uh, maneuverability and practicing and getting familiar with what your aircraft can actually do. Uh, this is a really good example of that. Uh, they were actually capping this, and we were in the process of getting it back, so we were defending a facility. Uh, and what I'm doing here is I'm just strafing from doorway to doorway. I want to know if there's anybody in there. And all you really need to do for this is just to roll your aircraft to the side and use the space bar. Once you get close to where you want to be, remember momentum's going to kick in and you're going to drift a little bit. Turn it back the other way, hit space bar again. Uh, but yeah, I mean, practice it. You're using rocket pods. You want to be able to be stable, um, and the hover airframe really helps. Now, the, in the last video, I talked about doing uh, kill turns, and that's just the fast, sharp turn that you can do. Um, and I wanted to show you this, because it's possible that you can lose your target. They can, it can either be killed by somebody else, you lose that on the XP, or they just may escape. I'm watching the Sunderer right here getting ready to uh, mobilize and get out of there. So I turn around really quickly and I come back for my last pass to kill him before he ever gets the chance to leave. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a useful turn for air to air, but it's really important when you're attacking the ground. A couple of things to consider when you're attacking the ground is that you're going to go through a lot of ammo. Uh, you know, the pods fire fast and you don't carry a whole lot of them. Uh, you know, there's typically a lot of targets around, so you go through that really quickly. Uh, the next thing is that you're actually attacking... Uh, a base or a group of vehicles and everything's going to do damage against you. Uh, you're not as armor, armored as a, like a Liberty, for example, so small arms fire is going to impact you. Flak is going to really hurt. Uh, you know, tanks are going to hurt you as well. Uh, tanks can really kill you really fast if you're flying too low. Uh, but all of that said, between the need for repairing and re get reloading, you want to know where you can go back to find a uh, pad to do both of those. Now, if you're attacking somewhere that's close to one of your bases, it's easy to find your way back. But no matter how good of a pilot you are, it's easy to get turned around and forget where you are. If you're too far away from a base that has something along those lines, I always set a waypoint back to where I can go to get more ammunition. Uh, it just makes sure that I can uh, stay thinking clearly and I'm not making any stupid choices. When you're reloading your rocket pods, it takes a while to do that. And, you know, even with the, up, the upgrades that you can make, it's still not making a huge improvement. Uh, so with that in mind, it's always important to know that you can switch over to your primary to continue doing damage and kind of eating away at it until you can get your other weapon reloaded. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that your rocket pods will reload while you switch over to your primary. So then you can switch back over to your rocket pods and have those pretty close to ready whenever it's time. 
Uh, you know, like I said, it's not going to do a ton of damage, but it's going to do enough. It's going to help keep making progress. And it, if nothing else, it's going to help you break even against maybe an engineer that's repairing the vehicle that you're trying to kill. Um, when you're attacking tanks, there's a couple different things to know. One is that when you're attacking a tank, the natural reaction for most of the drivers is to reverse. They want to just back up. So if you're attacking a tank from the front, keep using that space bar as they reverse. If you're attacking from the back, just know that they may try and back underneath you and you might have to take another path. Now, if you're attacking from the front, make sure you keep your elevation. The turret from their cannon has a maximum elevation. If you come in too low though, and you're flying in a straight line, you're a really easy target to hit and you're pretty much a guaranteed one hit kill. Uh, kind of the same principle goes for turrets. You don't want to fly straight when you're attacking a turret. You want to kind of see what direction they're facing and get your shots off first. I like to come in high on turrets, almost do a dive bombing run. You know, there's a couple different approaches there, and it's a little bit harder to handle now that the, uh, the nerf happened and now they're a little bit stronger. Uh, but just know that taking on a turret or a tank or pretty much anything face-to-face -face is normally a really bad idea. Today's Don't Be a Dick Tip of the Week is all about suicides, and uh, sometimes you're going to have somebody on your tail that uh, you just can't shake and you're taking a lot of damage. Option one should not be nosedive into a mountain. We all know you're trying to screw the other pilot out of the XP. It's cheap, it's stupid, it's lame. Get better. The only way you're going to get better is by learning the turn and engage your target. You're not going to win every time, but that's okay. So, stay alive, keep fighting. It makes everybody more happy. All right, so that's pretty much it for this week. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. Uh, again, hopefully you were able to get something out of this. Uh, Air to ground is a huge target, so I probably missed out on quite a bit. So there may be a follow-up video to this when I start thinking about whatever it was that I did leave out. Uh, you know, if you liked it, please uh, hit that like button and subscribe. Uh, lots more to come. Uh, and until next time, guys, you know, I appreciate you watching. Take care, and I'll talk to you later.